Assalamu alaikum everyone. So this is a very, very big episode. We're going to talk about so many different things in this one. And I don't even necessarily know what to title it. I was sitting here for like the past two days and I'm like, what am I going to name this episode? Because I'm going to talk about so many things in it. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I'm going to be a menace. and I'm going to name it something simple. So, <laughs> so this might just have a really simple title, but we're going to talk about lots and lots of different things on this one. And if it doesn't have a very simple title, then it doesn't. Okay. So the two main things that I'm going to be talking about in this episode is trust and thoughts and all of the branches and everything else that comes underneath it. So getting straight to the point, I think that I've always correlated trust with emotions and thoughts with your brain, which is 100% correct. But I feel like over the past month and especially this past week with everything going on i'm filming this on july 12th so especially the past two days like i feel like i've learned how your trust and your thoughts go a lot more together than people think that they do and i wanted to talk about that on here and this was also something that i was like kind of getting myself towards when i took those days off and i was just you know focusing on you know just myself but like I feel like especially these past two days and just everything going on, um, this belief of mine has been ensured and I learned something very, very valuable that I wanted to talk about. So I have a little notepad thing in front of me where I wrote something out and that's how you know this is serious because if I write it out, you know, one time my sister was like, hey, so do you like write a script for your podcast and like do it? I'm like, girl, what do you think this is? You think I'm going to sit here, write up a whole MLA document? write up 12 pages no like this is a hobby this is not a schoolwork. I just do this as I I just make it up as I go but I actually wrote down like a few key terms here that I want to talk about so let's start off with thoughts and we'll talk about trust in a minute thoughts what you think says a lot about you and you already have heard that oh you know good thoughts make you a good person and think about good things and yeah you've heard that and I'm not here to tell you that you've heard that But one of the really big things that I learned recently is how to disassociate yourself with your thoughts. Now you're probably going to be like, okay, yeah, I bet I already know how to do that. Just listen. Listen, how many times have you trusted someone and felt, oh my God, what if they're betraying me? How many times have you trusted someone and thought, what if they leave me? And what if they end up hurting me like everyone else? I know I have lots of times. And it actually happened to me literally like a couple days ago. But now let's talk about people leaving. People leave out of your life for various reasons. Sometimes, depending on the relationship, it could be between your friends, it could be someone you love, your family. Sometimes people leave your life for the better. And then sometimes people leave your life to come back. This phrase that, we, that brings us all comfort that you know, when something is written for you, Allah will never give it to someone else. So when something is written for you, you don't have to compete for it. You don't have to go out there and get yourself dizzy and going crazy to chase it. It'll come to you. Okay? It'll come to you. We all know that. But it's so difficult to internalize that when you lose something that you really, really liked or that you really, really wanted. So it's like to the point you ask yourself, how am I supposed to believe that this thing might come back? And I'm going to tell you the honest answer. You don't. And by that, I mean, you don't sit here and keep the expectation that this thing will come back. You can keep the expectation from God to bring it back. But you're not going to sit here and keep the expectation from the person to come back. Because when you start to put that expectation on a person, you are going to be let down so bad. You're going to get hurt so bad. It There's no if, ands, or buts, or maybes. There's nothing to it. You put that expectation on a person, you have now given someone power over you. You have now given someone that power over you. Expectations come through emotions, come through things that you want, things that you wish would work out a type of way, which has your emotions in it, which means that when you put that expectation on someone, you have now given someone that power over you. And no one should have power over you except God. What happens when someone has power over you? They control you. It's simple. They control you. They don't text you back. You start sitting here crying. You're wailing. You're depressed. You're sad. Oh my God, I feel like I can't go on. This person decides that they want to get up and leave your life. You feel torn. You feel broken. You feel so disappointed. You're like, I thought that you were different. This person decides that they want to start acting funny and they'd want to treat you bad. Now you're starting to think, am I not worth it? Am I not good enough? Why are they treating me like that? No. It's because you've let that person have power over you. How someone acts and how someone treats you is never anything to do with yourself. Which is why I heard this quote that said when people cheat, 
they cheat with people that are good for their image and over people that were not good for their souls or something like that over people that are good for their souls yeah that was that was those quote it was people cheat with those that are good for their image and hide the ones that are good for their souls it was something like that and i was like really really though because if you're cheating and you're hiding it is it really that good for your image and if someone's that good for your soul why are you hurting them you know and so i have talked to so many girls that have told me that they got cheated on and they're like i did nothing like i wonder was it my fault did i not do good enough was i not pretty enough no you did nothing except pick a dude that is horrible (laughs) there's no there's no other way to say it except pick a dude that was not good and you obviously didn't know that no one goes to the field and picks a cheater no one picks a cheater okay you find out over time that someone was a cheater no one picks a cheater voluntarily we're not stupid but i'm sorry you did nothing except pick some dude that was not worth it it's simple as that so when you get cheated on or you get hurt by someone don't automatically think what did i do and you know was it my trust issues pouring in no a lot of times people who cheat not only have no respect for the relationship they don't have respect for themselves because there's no way you can respect yourself enough to know that you are in a position of hurting someone and being okay with that you can't you can't respect yourself you cannot respect yourself if you are okay with getting yourself hurt this much out there with throwing yourself in situations that will hurt you and saying oh i'll just get over it when time comes you don't respect yourself You don't care for yourself. I don't want to hear likewise. You don't care for yourself. Because if you cared for yourself enough and you respected yourself enough, you would be a lot more careful before going head in into situations like that. Leading me to my next thought. Trust issues are very common. Trust issues are everywhere. We all have trust issues. I think that it's a blatant lie when people say they don't. Yes, everyone has trust issues. But that doesn't mean you get to be a leaking bucket. That doesn't mean that you get to take old experiences into new things. Stop taking old feelings into new things. Stop taking old mistrust, misissues into new things. Stop taking old trust issues into new things. You can have trust issues and feel like, okay, maybe I'm worried that this person may not be loyal to me or I may be worried that this may go downhill or I may be worried that I may get physically or emotionally abused again. But this does not give you the right to impose your trust issues on someone and reflect them to be a bad human being because you are battling these insecurities and these trust issues you don't get to deflect your trust issues on people because it makes you feel comfortable that's self-victimization what people do is they reflect their trust issues on people that person gets upset and they're like why are you thinking of me like that and a lot of times you should trust before you know you should trust until there's a reason not to and this person could be a really good genuine person and you just push them away by you know giving your own trust issues and giving your own thoughts and saying that you're a liar you're a cheater and this person did nothing this person did nothing Now, if this person did do something, you got the proof, you got the evidence, okay, that's different. But you can't just sit here and jump at every single random person in your life and say that, well, you're the worst person in the world, you hurt me, and you're going to be a cheater, and I know you're going to hurt me. Like, if you knew this person was going to hurt you, why are you messing with them in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many things that go into that. Like, you can't just deflect your trust issues right off the bat on someone. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. They did nothing to deserve that from you. You can have those trust issues and you can be working through them and healing through them and learning to open up your eyes and your image and realize that, okay, not everyone, per- not every single person's like this. I understand that I may be going through this. I had old experiences that made me come to this point, but I have no right today to take these trust issues and impose them on this person because no one carries the emotional baggage of someone else. I'm not going to impose my trust trust issues on someone else. That They didn't do that to me. They didn't hurt me. They weren't the reason I'm, I'm at this point today. So why should they have to deal with that? And that's the same concept where people will constantly do this and do this and do this. And then you end up self-sabotaging a lot of the things that you have. Leading me to my next point, where lots of women have actually asked me to talk about this in my DMs or I've talked to them about on the phone about this or like I'll get messages on Discord where girls be like, hey, can you talk about this? So I'm going to talk about this in here because I think this matters and correlates quite well. Talking stage. If you're in a talking stage with a guy and he decides to leave you, so many girls think, I don't even want to call it talking stage because I mean, obviously like the halal way, you know what I mean? Like halal talking stage, not talking, talking, talking stage. You know what I mean? Okay you get it and they leave you and i've always heard two main reasons one he's he's left he said he'd come back and then he popped out with another girl he said he wasn't ready he said he needed time and he popped out with another girl girl originally devastated sad depressed broken two 
he's ended it for the sake of the dean and he's like okay i need time for myself i need to focus on myself and in a couple years if god wills we'll look back at this you know um if you are still who i want you to be and if i'm still someone that you still see interest in right so if like if the interest is still mutual we'll look back at this we'll we'll think about it then right girl's still devastated she's still hurt and that's normal it's normal to feel sad because you really really saw a future with this person but you're not ready and he's not ready then there's no point in going forth and talking and talking and talking because you're only going to build a connection and then if in two to three years things don't work out that's gonna hurt so you're better off just dealing with that little bit of pain that little bit of you know headache of oh i have to let this person go you know and then maybe hopefully inshallah they'll come back in two three years for me or you sit here and you make it haram you milk it out and you force that and then you get hurt broken okay and no one's saying do that that's the worst thing it's haram don't do that but ultimately girls sometimes get upset at men like that and you can't get upset you can't let me tell you why men people say men are stupid men are not stupid men are not stupid men are probably the biggest menaces on this planet <laughs> men are very 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 slick very intelligent lots of men are stupid intelligent women who say men are stupid i'm like mm, is he stupid though or is he just acting let me tell you men are very slick stupid slick okay and if they wanted to and they liked you they could have sat here manipulated you and milked out conversations with you for the next two to three years they could have sat here and milked out conversations with you try to find excuses to talk to you try to find ways to get you to be more interested in them and even now again this also depends on the woman's character because when you see a man doing that you gotta take a step back you be like stop talking to me block him get rid of him because he needs to understand the boundary that as a woman you know, and it's just being a Muslim woman, you, you have to do stuff the halal way. Halal way or no way, get away from me, right? You know that. But now let's say that you fall short, right? Let's say you get into whatever he's doing. Let's say you start to fall into his, you know, emotional and mind manipulation or into his feelings. And he's sitting here promising you, I promise I'm going to marry you. I'm going to make you meet my family and I love you so much and I can't live without you. Blah, 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 blah Yeah. Mm -hmm. What comes after that? Two to three years? You're like, okay where's your family uh you know i was just thinking i just feel like you know like i liked you two to three years ago but now i'm someone different two to three years from now so bye yeah then you're gonna sit there and you're like i just wasted two to three years of my life with this menace and he ran away so if a man you know that men have that potential right you know that lots of men have that potential and unfortunately i've seen men that are not really dean oriented do that where they will try to milk out that conversation with a girl milk out time with her and try to find excuses to constantly 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 talk to her constantly be up in her skin constantly try to you know engage himself with her in a way to keep her around as an option and then when things fall short she's the one gets hurt he never had the intention in the first place he was just trying to see how long he could get something out of you so we know that men can do that right and men themselves know that they can do that but now when a man is saying hey i'm you, i feel like sometimes a man doesn't need to say it that he's serious for you to tell that he's serious sometimes when they say okay i talked to someone that was a scholar or i talked to someone that was an imam and they recommended that we should stop talking and that you know we should not communicate we should not grow feelings we should not do this we should not do that and we should postpone this and then if god wills you know you need time i need time and if time comes in a couple years and the mutual interest is still upheld and maybe like you know you're still someone that I, I like and whatever like vice versa then we'll cross that bridge and we'll look at it then but for now let's not let's just stop talking let's just stop doing all this it's normal for a girl to feel upset it's normal for a girl to think oh what was it me no because this person inshallah cares for you enough to take to say no up front to you to say no to say i'm gonna take a step back from this to say that i value the dean more than this temporary thing that i can get out of it and that is a beautiful quality now are there some men that are gonna do that and then they pop out with another girl in like six months yeah oh well not my bullet not my l because look you dodged you you dodged a fat one 
you dodged a big bullet. God took him out of your life, and he said that he wasn't going to be ready for another three years, and then out of nowhere he comes out with a girl in six months? And you're like, I thought you wasn't ready. So why the hell were you sitting here making promises with me? But it's okay. You dodged a bullet. He, he's gone. None of your worries. You're alive. You got options. Keep it moving. Keep it pushing. You're not going to sit here and think, oh, was everything he was telling me a lie? And was he a liar? And did he not actually... Mm. You know what I've noticed? I've noticed that men who make less promises actually end up being a lot more faithful. I've noticed that those men... I've heard so many stories from girls. He promised he would marry me and he would do this and he would do this. And I'm like, so where is he? Where is he? And nowhere to be found. But I've noticed that the men that are like, I can't promise you anything. I can't guarantee you anything. But if God wills, you know, we'll, we'll look towards this. I've noticed them to be a lot more faithful. Because I feel like they understand that they practically, it's not in their control. It, what is in their control is becoming the best them, getting their finances right, getting themselves straight, and then, you know, making dua Allah and then, inshallah, here, you know? And they understand that they can't guarantee anything. They understand that they can't promise anything. And they know that with promises comes emotional attachment, comes heartbreak, comes sadness. So they know better than to break a girl's heart. And so they're like, I can't guarantee anything. I can't promise you anything. If God wills, we'll look at this when time comes if you are someone that I still feel likewise with and vice versa. And that's okay. And so many girls struggle to just say, okay, thanks, Jazakallah I appreciate you not wasting my time or my emotions and just leaving it at that because they, they kept an expectation. And it's normal to keep an expectation. But expectations lead you to lots of uncertainty. Because let me tell you something. While you're sitting here and you're with a guy, and I know, I know lots of girls that are with guys that are the type of men that are just trying to milk out time with them. Just constantly, constantly, constantly trying to do the things that happen in a haram relationship without the title really and just the same 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 stuff and i know so many girls that are like not happy at all so you're not happy with this situation of him being around and you're not happy with the situation of him without it so how are you going to be happy by letting go of the expectation by letting go of him if you're in a situation where this guy is trying to milk out time with you and he's constantly talking to you tell him that i'm done talking to you get your life straight and if you really care about me enough you'll come back for me later if i'm still someone you're interested in okay come back but what you're not going to do is sit here and not change yourself and not work on yourself and not become the best you for the next two to three years just because you want someone to like you just because someone liked you two years ago doesn't mean that they'll like you two years later from now and that's so fine that's fine I know that that's a very, very bitter thing to take. I know that it's not ideal. But do you really think that being the, forcing yourself, forcing yourself to be the exact same person you are today, not growing, not changing, becoming bitter, petty, and annoyed, waiting, wasting two years of your life, thinking, oh, I just have to show this dude, like, I'm, I'm still the same person so he could come back and get to me? No, girl, go do you. Chase what you want to do. Follow your own dreams. Start whatever passion you want to start. Get an education. Go to school if you can. Get that degree you want. Get your own career. Get, get your own bag. Let it go. Let it go. It's not, it's not not caring. And sometimes when I say things like this, people are like, oh, you just don't care. No. You need to care about someone enough to let them go. Because when you learn to let them go, you learn to understand that this person... I love you enough to care about your ahira. You know, and I saw this video where someone was talking about how, oh, well, I love her so much. I just can't let her go. I'm in a haram relationship. I just can't let her go. You don't love her enough. You don't love her enough. People in haram relationships don't love each other. Don't tell me likewise. Don't, just, don't tell me likewise. They're like, oh, well, he's the love of my life and I never thought I'm da, da, da. No, you don't love him enough. Because if you did, you'd, you'd let him go. You'd let him go. You clearly don't love him enough. Because if you know that your ahira is at stake and his ahira is at stake, and you're still doing this, that's just some worldly love. You don't care about you don't care about that. And when you care when you love and care about someone enough to care about their ahira, and you're like, I'm not gonna milk out time with you, I'm not gonna get in a haram relationship with you, I'm not gonna give you false expectations, I'm not gonna break your heart, that's something real. And sometimes what's real, it's not easy to take because it's not easy sitting here wondering if, you know, someone that you like will like you back in two years from now. But that's why you kill, you kill the expectation. So many girls are like, should I sit here and wait? No, you should not sit here and wait. You should not sit here and expect that. You should not sit here and place the expectation on him. You can like someone, make dua to Allah to bring that righteous, good person, but don't keep that expectation from that person because you'll end up heartbroken when time comes. Don't do it. It's not fair to you. And then, you know, in some cases, you can meet someone for a very, very short amount of time. It could be halal, but then both of you re recognize that, okay, hold on, like, I, I need time. 
I, I need time. And it could just be a span of two weeks that you barely knew this person. Now you're feeling kind of sad. You're like, I was really invested in this person. Like, I really saw goodness in this person. And now both of you have decided that we're not going to talk anymore. We're not going to communicate anymore for the sake of the deen. And we'll, we'll come back to this in a couple years, if God wills, if, you know, the interest is still mutual. And so it's normal to sometimes feel, well, I'm sad. I, I really wanted this to work out. But sometimes Allah makes a very, very short introduction. Makes a very long isolation of silence between you two. Only for it to end up in a lifetime. Only for y'all to end up in a lifetime. You never know. You can, you know, it's normal. It's normal to like someone and feel super infatuated and just want to talk to them and be with them and, you know, constantly be around them and whatever, whatever, whatever. And when you put those desires aside and you do it the halal way and you say, well, okay, I'm, I know I'm not ready, so I'm not going to waste your time right now and I'm not going to waste your emotions. So let's stop talking and we'll come back to this if the interest is mutual and you let it go. Like, there is no better form of love than that because you know that this person genuinely cares about you more than just this dunya and you know this person cares about you enough because they realize that if you guys do get married you want it to work out in the right way there's this beautiful saying you can't plant the seeds of paradise with this i'm sorry you can't plant the trees of paradise with the seeds of hell and so you can't plant this beautiful beautiful thing well you know placing haram in the ground it's not gonna work it's not gonna work so with all of this comes lots of thoughts. It becomes, well, I like this person. Why did this person leave me? Or my family member did me dirty. Why did they do this to me? Was I not worthy? Was I not good enough? I'm feeling worthless. No, you aren't. Learn to create a distance between you and your thoughts. How do you do that? Now, let me tell you. Let's say I said, I'm feeling worthless. The thought came to my mind that I'm feeling worthless. I'm sitting here. It's 1, 1 p.m. I'm sitting here. I'm just thinking about life. And I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm worthless, I'm sad, I'm not feeling happy, I'm not, I'm this, I'm that, I'm saying all these things about myself, right? Because these are thoughts that are coming in my mind. You have a choice on what thoughts you choose to buy. So when the thought comes to your mind that I'm feeling worthless, I'm feeling insecure, stop, create a barrier. Stop saying, I am feeling, I am worthless, I am this, because these were just thoughts that were in subjective they were not accurate they were not you know define one thing it was just a thought our brain goes through thousands and thousands of thoughts in one day and if you're gonna sit here and you're gonna buy every single one of those thoughts you're gonna go crazy people make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be you have thousands of thoughts that go through your brain every single day and you have a decision on which thoughts you choose to buy which thoughts you choose to buy and dwell and make homes out of and make thoughts out of and create big scenarios out of so if you come across a negative thought like oh i'm feeling worthless you have the decision is this thought going to benefit you no okay then leave it at that leave it at a thought don't buy that thought and start thinking about that thought start to create a barrier between you and your thoughts so for example, if you are having the thought that I'm feeling worthless, don't just sit here and say, oh, I'm worthless. No, say I'm having the thought that I am feeling worthless. I'm having the thought that I'm not good enough. What this does is it helps create a barrier between what you're thinking and what you actually feel. That way you don't end up buying into every thought. And since we're not going to buy thoughts that are not good, you don't get to ponder and overthink about this bad thought because now you've created the barrier so you know only good things can come and this can save you from so many things and it can save you from long nights of overthinking and overthinking throughout your day about things that don't serve you and overthinking about you know bad stuff and whatever happened before in your past because you question it now instead of just letting it be passive 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 so many of us are on autopilot and we're just passive 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 and so much junk gets thrown in our brain because of that because we're not actively thinking about what we're thinking about now how does this round back to trust when you are having a thought that oh maybe this person's going to hurt me or i'm feeling sad or i feel like you know my trust issues are pouring into this now you stop and instead of sitting here overthinking about potential scenarios you sit here and you say hold on this is my thought and i have no reason to think this because this person has not given me a reason now when we talk about you know potential one of the big things that lots of people do is they get themselves attached with a potential with the potential of what this thing can be with the potential of how this thing can work out and what you know future expectations it can have 
and it's normal to do that but you need to understand that you need to see things with the lenses as they are no this is my potential this is my dream this is what can happen in 10 years stop what is is in front of you that's it that's it stop getting attached to potentials now rounding back to the discussion that i had earlier of the whole talking phase thing you know i knew a girl who told me stories about how there were cases where like the family was involved everything was set stone and done and like they were gonna get married and like two days and out of nowhere like the dude just left her just you know left her was like bye done through with you and she was devastated she was like i thought at this point we owe each other loyalty because like literally about to get married and i think any girl would keep that same perspective that at one point or another loyalty does come in the picture now when i was talking to my friend about it she was like the harsh reality is practically no one owes you loyalty not until it's set in stone and to a degree I do see where she's coming from because that's true but at the same time I also feel like this is my personal opinion that as Muslims to some degree or another like Imana the concept of loyalty like it comes into play so yes you know you can come to a point where it's like all set in stone and perfect and by the talking stage that's really what I mean like when everything and everyone's involved and like you are literally planning to get married and I don't like to call that the talking stage because in western westernized dating i guess you could say the talking stage is like you know talking but i guess before the nikah you can essentially say where everyone's involved um i think girls get so infatuated with the potential that sometimes it makes them get very very heartbroken and so you want to be careful to not pour out your you know your expectations and whatever 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 onto someone so quickly because you don't even know who this person is and i hate to say that but i mean i guess that's the reality like i was talking to one of my friends about this too and she was saying how like you can be with someone for six years and not even know who they are so it's like it sucks but that's just the reality because people are going to paint themselves out to be what you want you what they want you to be right so if you say that okay i like this 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 person that really wants you will become exactly that <laughs> you say i like m&ms and flowers and this and that and you're gonna wake up for the next week and a half and that's all you're gonna see on your doorstep so people can become that but then it's like over time when they're done putting on the act and you're sitting there, you're like, wow, they get me so well. They understand me so well. And then, you know, six months down the line when they're tired of acting like someone that they're not and their true colors pour out, then you're like, crap, I don't like you. So you need to be careful about what you say up front and how much you say up front. I don't like to play those mind games and I don't like to, I just, it's annoying, I know, but practically that's just how this world works i mean of course if you find the right person inshallah that won't be an issue but yeah i think the other issue also that we don't talk about is that we have made marriage seem like that's it this is the end goal and i was driving with one of my friends to atlanta to go eat <laughs> um and we were talking and she was saying how people are just obsessed with the concept of marriage and just throwing in their role but not like actually being in love and i was like that is a very interesting take because let's be honest i have talked to 14 year olds that are like i want to get married i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i just and yes it's soon not to get married but i feel like young women need to remember and recognize that there is this big life outside of marriage i'm not saying marriage is bad it's so good for your dean completes half your dean sunnah da, 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 yes but you need to have goals for yourself and passions for yourself and dreams for yourself you can't be those girls that are just constantly you know waiting on guys and i have to marry a rich dude because his money's my money and then like it's like i've noticed the only sunnahs our teens are talking about is his money's my money and my money's my money growing out a beard four wives um that's it that's it and there's so many more beautiful sunnahs besides those things and because of you know tiktok and all the social medias and a lack of research on the teens and on their own these are the only sunnahs they care about and so women are not even setting goals for themselves and when you look at the mothers of the believers that we put with all of them such strong women so many beautiful attributes that we can learn from the prophets who are peace be upon all of them but people are just so caught up in oh his money's my money and my money's my money so i don't have to do anything i don't have to get a nice education i don't have to have my own goals and my own dreams and it's like listen 
that phrase is thrown around so much and i highly encourage girls to actually go and understand what that phrase means instead of just learning it off of tiktok and learning it off of twitter go and actually understand what that means because some people are starting to demonstrate a very very deep misunderstanding of that phrase and you know this whole concept that well i don't have to do anything because i'm just gonna marry rich and it's like you know like you like you you have to want more for yourself you really do and it's like grow grow your dreams grow your passions grow your whatever you meet the right person along the way okay great you know like you don't have to sit here and spend your years of you being 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 22 21 25 just sitting here thinking oh i'm gonna wait for the right person to come right person to come you've just wasted like 10 years of your life doing nothing except waiting when you could have spent those 10 years becoming the best you finding your goals finding your dreams and people don't like to say that but that's the truth and with tiktok and how tiktok portrays marriages they've made it seem like this beautiful perfect fairy tale reality when it's there's lots of days that are going to feel like you just can't do it you're going to want to be like i'm done i hate this person <laughs> you know days like that are going to come and it's like with the way that social media portrays marriages it makes young women not want to have any goals besides getting married and you have to want more for yourself while we're on this whole discussion of creating goals and passions and waiting on someone i wanted to bite my tongue but homegirl how could you let mo money just eat mubarak his way back into your life what was going through your brain look at me in my eyes and tell me how could you let mo money just eat mubarak his way back into your life what happened to i'm raising my standards and i'm not gonna let anyone get access to me and he has to become a better man to get near me and then he just eat mubarak his way back in your life and you let him in you let him in and that's what i'm saying like you girls are sitting here waiting like oh yeah when eid comes he's gonna text me on eid and then he can eat mubarak his way back in my life what happened i'm raising my standards and you know i'm gonna get my own bag and i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do like uh, how, how can you how can you how can you I, I was on tiktok and i saw so many messages of how girls showed how you know their version of mo money eat mubarak back in their lives and i was like how can y'all let him back in how can you let that back in and listen if you're confused about what this whole mo money thing is listen i think it's a us uk thing and alhamdulillah i've never met a mo money in my life and i don't want to keep that away from me but i've seen the trauma stories of you know girls mo monies and i'm just like you're messing with a guy who has the beautiful name of muhammad and he shorts it to mo and he throws money in front of it and the only thing he can flex is that he has his dad's money and he drives a bmw like are you really are you really gonna let that eid mubarak its way back in your life really really and you know what i I know i know there's some girl right now that's listening that let, let mo money eat mubarak his way back in your life and i want this to serve as a reminder and as a sign girl get up get up block that number wipe your tears get it together get off your bed go journal make some goals get some passions go out with your friends let it go let it go this obsessive matter that we have with marriage 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 you people don't see anything else outside of it every single holiday that comes people are like oh i wish i had someone on valentine's day girl who cares who cares get up and have your own goals and then the right person will come on its own time and then people whenever i say this they're saying oh you're just a feminist i am not a feminist i'm against feminism and i've said that in so many of my podcasts i'm against feminism okay but telling young girls to have their own goals and have their own dreams and want to achieve a higher education and be the best them is not feminism it's not feminism a woman could be married be a good wife and still decide that she wants to have a good education have a good job and whatnot and vice versa a woman with a good education and a good job can decide that she just wants to stay at home like don't 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 it's i i'm all about islamic rights the rights that you know islam has given women so it's seeking knowledge is something we should all be doing expanding becoming the best us muslims should strive for excellence and sitting here and just spending 10 years of your life thinking that someone's gonna come and save you is not striving for excellence in the movies someone comes and saves you someone comes and rescues and saves the day that's not gonna happen i hate to say that it's not gonna happen you're gonna have to get up and save yourself and take care of yourself go rely on allah allah will not let you down you can do the blind 
catch fall on Allah's many times, Allah won't let you down. But if you sit here waiting and waiting and waiting and letting your trust issues grow and just destroying yourself and wondering why did I get it? Why did I get what I wanted? And why don't I have this? And overthinking, you're going to ruin yourself and you're going to ruin your thoughts. And you can't want something good while being something bad. So be the type of person that you want in your life and work on yourself. And when God wills, things will work out. But if you sit here and you let your thoughts and your trust issues and your emotions eat you up, you're going to go on a spiral that will never end. You can't, you can't do that to yourself. Listen, you really can't. And especially to my girls, like, I, I see so many girls that are like, well, he did me so bad, but I still want to marry him. I'm like, why? Why? You know? And coming back to what I said earlier about how sometimes some men will end it for the sake of the deen and then say like, okay, I'm not ready, so I'm not even going to talk to you. That's beautiful. But let's be honest. That's the bare minimum. And when I, when I say stuff like this, I know people are probably like, oh, you're so ungrateful. Not really. Not really. I just know my standards. And that's the bare minimum. It's a beautiful characteristic. And unfortunately, it's rare, but it's the bare minimum. Because that, that's already what Islam tells us to do. That was an obligation. You had to do that. You knew that was right. So if a guy did that, good. Good. Seems like a good guy. But don't fantasize and put yourself head over heels. And Oh my God, he's so pious and he's so religious. Listen, when you want to marry someone for other reasons, you're going to paint that person out to be religious even if they're not. You can like the fact that they are 6'2 and have a nice jaw on you. Be like, yeah, he prays five times a day. That's why I want to marry him. No, girl, you like his jawline. You like the fact that he's 6'2 and he's built. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm attacking you girls today. And that's great. Cool. No problem. Praying five times a day is great. And it's rare. Which is why so many girls go crazy when they see a guy that prays five times a day. But we can't lie. That is what he should be doing already. Which is why, like, you need to raise the bar and raise the standard. Now, unfortunately, is it true that men don't pray five times a day? Yeah. Is it true that women also don't? Yeah, there's some women that don't. So it's like when you do find that person that does, it's rare, which is why like girls get head over heels. But also remember your Islamic ground. Remember that this was an obligation upon him, as is. So what else is he doing to strive to get you and become the best Muslim he can also be? You know, there's a lot more than him wearing a thobe and growing out his beard and going to Jummah on Fridays. That's beautiful. That's great. We love that. We stand that. But th there needs to be more. You need to want more. And if you ever feel like you're the type of person that compromises all their boundaries, write write them down. Write them down and write a star next to things that you think that, okay, I can work with this. I can compromise on this. But don't ever compromise on the things that don't have a star next to them. Write down what you're willing to compromise on and what you won't. And so when time comes and you're infatuated, head over heels, going crazy, open up that piece of paper and be like, hold on, girl. I wrote this when I was uninfatuated, when I was not infatuated. So I clearly had a lot more logic in this than when I do now. Okay? And again, this is not me saying that you guys shouldn't seek out and find good people, find good friends or what. No one's saying that. It's just that you need to understand who deserves to be in your life and who doesn't. And if someone has left and they stopped talking to you or they're like, hey, we'll pick up on this if the interest is mutual or you had a friend that left, you're like, that's fine. It's fine. You can feel sad. You can feel hurt. I'm not going to tell you don't cry. You can cry. That's human That's human behavior. You can feel sad. It's okay. Sometimes you'll feel sad pointlessly where you'll heal, you'll heal from it and then three months later you'll start crying again. It's okay. It happens. But that doesn't mean you get to kill yourself over it. That doesn't mean you get to sit in grief over it because you deserve more. One of the big lessons that I had to learn about my dawa and my podcast and instagram and just posting 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 sharing content is that i'm gonna do this regardless of whether someone likes it or doesn't whether someone wants me to stop or doesn't and that is a very very valuable thing that i have to teach myself now you may say that sounds so basic but do you guys not think that one point or another i have people in my lives that are like don't do that stop doing that of course but i also know that as a muslim dawa is one of the most best things that we can do so I'm not going to stop doing what I do because, you know, someone liked it and now they don't like it. Or because the person that I was really hoping would, you know, encourage my work didn't encourage it anymore. That doesn't matter. This is my passion. This is my goal. This is my dream. I like to do this. This is my form of happiness. No one gets to come in and take your form of happiness and what makes you feel happy. Snatch it out of your hands. Don't divert your goals towards someone else. If you wanted to go to 
a college, right? You want to go to a four-year college. Now you met a man before you go there and you're thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't even go to college anymore. And he said, I don't, he said that I shouldn't go and he just wants me to, you know, stay at home. But I barely know the guy. I don't know if I'm even ready for him. Stop. Take a moment. What do you want to do? You want to go to college? Go to college. You don't even know the dude yet. You've talked to him for three days and he's telling you that he doesn't want you to do this, do that, do that. Maybe that's a non-negotiable. Cool. No problem. But also have your own boundary. If you want to go out and get a higher education, do that. You want to strive in the way of Allah, do that. Do that. I know some parents that stop their children from going to mosques. Or some men that don't allow their wives to go to mosques. And it's like, you know, like, of course in Islam we're told that you should obey and listen to what your husband says. But when you're in the talking stage with someone, don't formate yourself to be someone completely you're not just to attract a person, you know? Be your authentic self, and then the person that will like you for you as you are will come. You don't have to wait your whole life and change yourself and not live. When you're maybe 26 and you're married, you're going to look back when you were 18, and you're going to be like, man, I wish I just lived my life. I wish I just enjoyed my years of college. I wish I just enjoyed going out with my friends. I wish I just enjoyed, you know, all the holiday breaks that I had. I wish I just enjoyed the summers instead of sitting there, you know, sulking that I'm not married. So many people teens on tiktok are crying oh i just wish i was married i wish i was married dude you're 18 you're 19 you're 20 you're in your prime years go have fun go have fun go do halal stuff go you know work out have the best time of your life become the best you who you work on now is going to become the foundation of who you are when you're in your 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and so on so work on yourself instead of sulking and dreaming and i just want this and that don't make that your only goal have more goals for yourself want to strive out go strive for ihsan strive for excellence and then inshallah here when god wills things will come but you need to learn to control your thoughts and control that negative mindset that i need to have what everyone else is having or i'm worthless because you're not worthless there's a barrier i'm having the thought that i'm worthless you aren't automatically worthless just because your thoughts said that you are inshallah here i hope that this episode was insightful for some of you and helped you get into the understanding of some stuff i've been waiting for my mic to come in i'm so sorry i took the 10 days off and i was like okay i'm gonna order my mic which it was just a catastrophe and then um i don't know they say it's gonna come this friday but i got an email that i got shipped today so I'm like, how are you going to expedite yourself here in two days? Because I just, I don't, I don't know. But inshallah here, I'm sorry guys. I, I hope that inshallah when it comes, I can upload more. But yeah, just bear some patience with me. I'm, I'm getting my mic. I'm just waiting for it to come. And I had to order like a bunch of other cables and stuff. So, <laughs> you know, look at me working hard. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. Um, If you have any recommendations, let me know. I appreciate it every one of you also 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 hi i hate to be that person but um i highly encourage you all to go also listen on apple podcast because i worked a year and a half to get that on there mm-hmm. that's all that's all i wanted to say okay assalamualaikum